Hi everybody and welcome to how to solve a physics problem, aka Mr. Webb's physics problem solving strategy. Um, and in all honesty, it's also a life problem solving strategy as well, but we'll get into that later. Okay? So here's the idea. It's called the obvious guess to physics. Okay, Basically, that's because there are two obvious things that you need to do. Okay? And we can do the rest of the steps with guesses. There's an extra S. But anyway, so the obvious thing to do, okay? The first thing you gotta do is breathe before you even read the problem. Go ahead, take a breath, and then read the problem. Later on, you're going to do, once you read it, you can write down the givens, figure out what the unknown is or what you're looking for, figure out what the right equation to use is, substitute the right numbers into the equation, and then go ahead and solve. You do the self-check, and then you show off, okay? So that's quick. Let me, uh, let me show you a little bit more in detail, okay? So let's talk about this. You've got some obvious stuff that needs to happen. Number one is breathing, okay? Oxygen is the key here. Yes, take a deep breath, relax. It helps your brain relax. It helps your brain. It really what it does is it gets blood flowing to your brain a little more and you're able to think better. The best way to do this is a six second breath. You breathe in for two seconds and then out for four. In, out. I know it's a little weird, but it will relax you. It will bring oxygen to your brain and then you'll be able to solve these problems, okay? So take a deep breath first. There's never a problem that I'll give you that you won't be able to solve. Second obvious thing is to, well, read the problem. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty simple, you have to do that. But the key here is don't be surprised if you have to read it multiple times. That's okay. I still have to read some of the problems I give you multiple times because when we were used to reading things fast and then we have to read something that has lots of details in it and we lose stuff. So reading it multiple times is okay. In fact, it's encouraged. The other thing you might wanna do here is actually visualize what's going on. Think about it in your head, what's happening, take your time, okay, read it a couple times. Those are the two obvious things that you wanna do, okay? Breathe first and then read it. Once you've done that, you have it set up. Now you need to do the rest of the work. Okay, this is where the real, not the hard part, but the involved part comes in. Okay, so here we go. The first one in here is G, the givens. Okay, what the givens are, are pieces of information in the problem that are given to you. Therefore, you can write them down as, well, givens. That's the word that we're going to use. It's information that you already know, okay? Uh, you can also say it's actually in the problem already, okay? All right, so you write those down. It might look something like, oh, the distance is 50 meters, and the time is six seconds it took this guy six seconds to go 50 meters this would be writing the givens okay information that you know write it down the next thing is to circle the unknown okay so you underline the things in the problem that you're given but then you circle the unknown so that you know what you're looking for okay this problem this little example problem might be asking something like what is the speed and so what you would do is go ahead and circle speed. That's what you're looking for, okay? So you know what you have and you know what you're looking for. That's the key to really any problem. Know what you have, know what you're looking for. Then you gotta find the right equation, that's the E. So G-U-E, that's the markings of a guess. And what you're doing is you wanna figure out what the right equation is. And again, you think about what do I know and what am I looking for? In other words, your givens and your equation, okay? Now, um, you could find these on your essential equation sheet. Uh, you could think them up. Most people don't do that, 
But if you know how speed is measured, you can sort of just make up the equation for this one, which would be s equals d over t. Now, what is an equation here? That's important to talk about because an equation just talks about the relationship between different things. Speed is the relationship of distance and time. And in the relationship, they just happen to be distance divided by time. Okay, So the idea is you want to find the right relationship that will give you what you're looking for. You're looking for speed, so you take 50 meters divided by 6 seconds. You take the distance divided by the time. That's the equation you're going to use. All right, so we breathed. We read the problem. We underlined the givens in the problem. We circled the unknown. We even picked out the equation that we're going to use. Now we actually have to do the math, okay, where we substitute and solve, okay? So we plug it in, okay? In this case, we don't know what S is. That's what we're looking for, okay? But D is defined as 50 meters. So that's what we do. We write 50 meters. And then the problem tells us to divide, so we divide. Okay? And then it says divide it by the t, and we define t as 6 seconds, so we write in 6 seconds. Okay, And so here you substitute and solve. Now, the numbers and the units can be solved, in a sense, separately. Okay, um, 50 divided by 6. I should know that off the top of my head. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 6 is 42. Um, so it's probably something like 8 point something. That's off the top of my head. I hope I'm not wrong. But let's say it's 8.16. Just a guess. Okay? So if it's 8.16, actually I'm going to say 8.3. That's my guess. Off the top of my head as I'm recording. So it's 8.3. So you divide 50 by 6, I'm thinking it's 8.3. I could be wrong. But, and then... you. Here, the meters per second, they're their own thing. But you don't actually, you can't divide a letter by a letter and get one letter out of it. No, you get meters per second. Okay? So in other words, your answer here is 8.3 meters per second. Okay? And don't forget those units. If you forget the units, they take a point off. Okay? All right, then you ask yourself, well... Self, does this answer make sense? Okay, so this guy covered 50 meters in six seconds. Is 8.3 a reasonable answer? 8.3 meters every second. Does that make sense? Like 8.3 plus 8.3 plus 8.3 six times, that would be 50 meters? Yeah, that seems reasonable. What you want to do, this self-check is when you make sure, well, is it 1,000 meters per second? Ooh, that does not seem right. I must have done something wrong. Okay, double check. Ask yourself if it makes sense. If you're doing a calculation and it says that a kid is riding his bicycle at 13,000 miles per hour, that doesn't make sense. So you probably did something wrong. Okay? These problems are all, are all based in reality. Okay? All right. So now you're sure of the answer. Okay? You breathed. You read. You underlined the givens. You circled the unknowns. You picked the right equation. You substituted. You solved. You self-checked, and you, 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 you know you have the answer. There's one last step that I need you to do, and that's boxing the answer, otherwise known as show off. You need to show off your answer. Box it so that I know which one is your answer. If I don't know which one is your answer, then I'm not, I, I might mark the wrong one. So you need to tell me which one is your answer. Okay, so to summarize, whenever you have a problem in this class, you've got the obvious guess. Just think about it. What should I write? Write the obvious guess, and here's what you do. You do the obvious. You breathe and you read. Take a deep breath. Read the problem over and over again. And then you guess. It's obviously not a guess, but that's just what we're saying. So you guess by underlining the givens, circling what you're looking for, the unknown. The equation is when you select which equation or relationship you're going to use. You substitute and solve. You put in the numbers. You self-check. You ask yourself if it makes sense. And lastly, you show off by boxing your answer. That's how you solve a problem in physics. You can relate that to real life. 
I expect you to do that at some point. And this is what we're going to use the rest of the year. So get used to it. If you have any questions, this whole thing is on Moodle. Okay, so you can always access it if you have your laptop with you. You can also just print that out and use it on your tests as a little cheat sheet. I'm fine with that as long as it doesn't have any scribblies on it. Okay, all right, see you in class.